I would guess that most of you have at least once used an emoji in your everyday written communication. Because it's almost too tempting not to try, right? But why is the, the use of emoji so popular and appealing? And does it have an influence on language? Um, those questions not only keep artists, as we have seen the last few days, um, or psychologists busy, but also us linguists. But let's start with a brief look on the history of emojis. 1982, the computer scientist Scott Foreman devo developed the first emoticon, which was composed of punctuation marks and had, has to be right, uh, read sidewards. I guess most of you know that little symbol. And this symbol was supposed to serve as a choke marker, whereas the sad face intended to mark, mark statements that are not funny. Later on, the stock was extended with a winking smiley or a, a, a crying emoticon and many, many more. Anyway, those symbols spread quickly and so were soon seen as a typical feature of SMS communication, for example. But as some of you may remember, not too long ago we only had those old cell phones where we had to press every button several times in order to get the sign or the letter you wanted. So you had to make quite an effort to produce one of those little faces here. Besides, as you can easily imagine, the technical preconditions do have an influence on the way we write. If it's easy to, to make such a face, we, we do it more often maybe. But um, yeah, that is another story as well. Anyway, it all changed in 2011. Not only that we no, no longer had to click our sumsor due to the rise of the smartphone keyboard where every letter is separate and uh, you don't have to pre press the same button several times, but also the emoji keyboard was developed. And here, their story of success begins. Meanwhile, there are more than a thousand different emojis. We can use round yellow faces that are laughing, kissing, crying, wearing sunglasses. We can find all different kinds of food, animals, vehicles, or technical devices. Um, the emoji keyboard um, also contains flags or symbols, for example. And for quite a spell, we, we have even been able to use um, different skin colors of these little faces, hands, thumbs, and so on. And couples do not only exist of men and women anymore, but there are also same-sex relationships in the world of emoji. So here we see quite progress. One may ask at this point why these little pictographs are even interesting for linguists, as um, icons are not uh, what we would usually describe as typical language. But one cannot deny their increasing involvement in written language and communication in general. It's getting to the point where emojis are even classified as words. As you can see here, the Oxford Dictionary even choose an emoji as word of the year. I'd say this is the ultimate entitlement to investigate emojis from a linguistic perspective, isn't it? Um, and here you can see the justification uh, for, for this choice. Um, it says that's right, for the first time ever, the Oxford Dictionary word of the year is a pictograph. And they say it is because the word that best reflects the ethos, mood, and preoccupation of 2015. And uh, moreover, the face with tears of joy, um, joy was chosen because it was the most used emoji in 2015. Um, in the last two years, its frequency of use has risen impressively, but not only the tears of joy um, emoji in particular, but also um, emojis in general have become more and more popular these last few years. What happened? Okay, here we are. Okay. Sorry. Um, this graph shows the percentage of text, um, comments, and captions uh, containing emoji characters um, graphed over time. 
in the month following the iOS emoji keyboard um, introduction, 10% um, of texts on Instagram contained emoji. Uh, the trend continued until the release of Instagram for Android um, in April of 2012, when many new users did not have emoji support. Afterwards, there was a clear upward trend um, which accelerated after emo uh, Android received emoji support in July 2013. And the curve is still steeply pointing upwards. Having a look at the real-time um, emoji use on Twitter confirms the impression. Um, this is a screenshot, of course, but you, um, if you go to the website emojitracker.com, you can see um, which emoji is used in um, which second. So the green fields lighting up are actually those emojis that are used in this second, and you can see the numbers are very high. So we see emojis are becoming more and more important in the context of writing. And now, as it turns out, this development causes a lot of fears, not only in the worried, worried population, but also in the mass media. There is talk of death and killing of language. These metaphors seem to be extremely popular um, in the context of language and change anyway. But at least here in these two articles, it's formulated as a question. And to be honest, the answers given in the articles are not always as bad as only reading the captions would suggest. Um, but as a fact, there are many articles that are very, they, um, that are, that are very negative. But not only death is feared. No, there is even the belief that emojis are ruining our civilization. Doesn't seem the greatest danger for me, looking at what's going on in the world, but again, that is another story. <laughs> anyway, not all of these articles are to be taken too seriously. A statement which can be applied to a lot of mass media products, I guess, and um, yeah, I, we heard some of it before. But even reputable newspapers are not immune to the spreading anxieties concerning the forthcoming decay of language. Apart from the fear of human regress, which may be true, but definitely not regarding emojis, this article contains an interesting thought, namely that emoji is the language itself. Um, and this thought is pursued um, at another point in the same newspaper, and the question arises if emoji, if emoji is to be the first truly global language. Could that indeed be the case? Actually, I must disappoint you. I don't think so. And I will now tell you why all these mentioned scenarios are very unlikely from a linguistic point of view. That's what I'm actually here for, I guess. First of all, there have been several linguistic studies which have, sh which have shown that there is no correlation between our leisure writing and literacy. Most of us, and not only us, but also teens, are perfectly able to distinguish between a WhatsApp message to a friend and applying for a job, for example. Where the former can, or depending on the relationship, even should contain emojis, um, it is not recommended to do so in the latter. Except you want to apply for a job as emoji designer. Um, but there are several other reasons why these decay myths do not reflect the linguistic reality. For one thing, even if the use of emojis has, has increased immensely, um, they still concern only a very small part of the written communication. Swift key users, for example, only use emojis in 4.6% of their typing session, according to the company's emoji report in 2016. For another thing, the stock of emojis is still very limited. It is hardly possible to verbalize complex issues um, at least without a great effort from both the producer and the recipient of the message. One gra grave difficulty lies in the fact 
that emojis only, almost only depict nouns, for example, as we have seen um, food or vegetables and stuff. That makes it really hard to express grammatical information such as tense, case, um, or number, or to describe actions which are expressed through verbs normally. This is also one of the reasons why emojis are not suitable as a, as a universal language. Another um, reason is the fact that emojis are ne uh, neither used nor interpreted the same way all around the world. Moreover, their interpretation varies not only individually, but also culturally. See, for example, this emoji, emoji the two hands. Whereas in Japan, they are seen as a salutation, other cultures would say those hands are praying or giving each other a high five. And what about these five emojis? Digital, digital challenge. <laughs> so let's hope. Yeah. Okay. The hands again and these five emojis. Here we are again. Does anyone have an idea what that could mean? It's the beginning of a story of a very famous book. Moby Dick, right? It is Moby Dick, and it is um, the first sentence of this word famous novel, um, which is um, actually Call Me Ismail. And it's translated to emoji, and the whole novel is called Emoji Dick. But <laughs> it's not that easy to read, is it? I guess the, the, the whale gave you the idea. Um, furthermore, there are also different cultural usage manners. According to the aforementioned Swift key studies, French users, for example, use far more hearts than any other users. <laughs> so here we see um, a national stereotype confirmed. <laughs> Arabic speakers use more flowers and plants and in Hawaii, users prefer palms, sunset, drinks, and surfers. What a surprise. <laughs> Apart from these culturally determined usage manners, there are, there are also linguistic patterns, which, which we can observe when it comes to emojis in messages. So for us linguists, the combination of text and emoji is, is the most interesting thing, the relation between icons and characters. How is that realized? Um, and there are mainly three communicative functions in which emojis occur. Um, here you can see the first one, and probably the most common one, is just to comment on a written text with an emoji. If you like something, you put a thumbs up or a smiling face. Um, if you don't like something, you can put your thumbs down and so on. And this function often serves to compensate nonverbal behavior, which, which written language cannot convey so well. So if you are in a face-to-face -face conversation, you can smile, you can uh, make facial expressions and gestures and so on, and you cannot do that in written language. And that's why emojis can be helpful in this respect. And this function has become so widespread that the absence of a smiling face can even lead to misunderstandings. And we have, um, um, the group of Dresden has showed that very nicely on, on Friday, I think. Um, a missing emoji can easily indicate that your girlfriend is very angry with you. And that is an interesting effect, um, aspect which shows how important these non-written elements have become in our everyday written communication. A second function in a second function, you, emojis are used to illustrate things, um, to illustrate written utterances. Applause comes with clapping hands, the Maldives are pictured with a palm, and St. Patrick's Day with a shamrock, the Irish flag, and of course, beer. 
This function does not depict a mood or compensate nonverbal behavior, but ac um, accompanies the written words on a visual level. The last and maybe the most interesting um, function from a linguistic perspective is the representation function. Here, emojis are used instead of a specific word, which mostly is a noun, but can also be um, a verb or an adjective, for example. Um, so instead of writing the words on, you, you can just um, um, use the emoji for it, or here, it can even uh, stand for a verb. Um, it can even replace a word, verb, sorry. Um, this is a Germ Swiss German example, but I translated it for you in English, and the red word is, of course, the, the verb. Whereas the other functions only accompany written language, here, we, in this case, it is replaced by emojis. And this is the only function where the question, if, um, where the question is justified if um, emoji is a danger for written language. But I must say that this usage is firstly still very rare, and secondly, is still mostly framed by written language. As you can see in the examples, um, we, we still have written language, but we have some points where it is replaced by emojis. And of course, it is also a manner of playing with language, which is not only good fun, but also good for developing creativity. And um, in this respect, you can also have uh, emojis only, for example. And let's test it. Do you know which songs are behind these puzzles? Does anyone have an idea? Yeah, right? That's an easy one. Oh, sugar, sugar, you're my candy girl. What about the second one? Any idea? Is it German? Ah, yeah, of course. I, I must say that. Yeah, right. Don't want to. Oh. Am I pressing the wrong button? I'm sorry. Yeah. We have Aerosmith here. I must say that this I is German, of course, because I, um, egg in German is I as the pronoun. <laughs> Not so easy. But as we are multilingual here, it, yeah. And we, ha we have, um, I love you till the end, and hit me baby one more time. <laughs> okay. Guess who also likes to write in picture puzzles? As a Swiss citizen, I had to mention Roger <laughs> Feder. Anyway, the point I want to make is, using emojis is not a threat for language at all, it rather enriches it. It allows us to specify our mood, to visualize the words we use, and to play with language and thereby being creative. As people have been complaining about language since the first word was written, I strongly want to speak up for openness concerning change in language. Because language is dynamic, flexible, variable, variable and just marvelous. Language adapts our communicative need, which in turn change as society in general changes. In this light, emojis are more of a revolution than a threat, which we should face joyfully. Thank you.